Hello and welcome to my channel. Today is Thursday and that means it's time for another episode of True Crime Tales with Christy. Today we're going to be talking about the murder of Bobby Kent. Bobby Kent was a 20 year old American man who was murdered by seven people including his best friend Martin Joseph Marty Puso Jr., born March 21st, 1973 in Weston, Florida. The murder was adapted into the 2001 film Bully. Bobby Kent, the son of Iranian immigrants Fred and Farah Kent, originally surnamed Kayam, attended South Broward High School in the South Florida suburb of Hollywood, Florida. According to Tim Donnelly, who prosecuted all the conspirators for this murder, one attorney described Kent as like Eddie Haskell. All the parents loved him in the neighborhood, but the kids looked at him a different way." End quote. Marty Puso is an Italian-American and was raised Catholic. Kent and Puccio had known each other since third grade, had lived on the same block in Hollywood, Florida since that time, and were good friends as teenagers. Bad blood, however, existed between the two. Puccio felt ill will and hatred towards Kent, who would bully and pummel him. Both sets of parents were wary of the friendship as well. Puccio's parents, Martin Sr. and Veronica, were concerned because Marty often returned from being with Kent bleeding or covered in bruises. Fred Kent thought of Puccio as a wayward slacker who had no future. Puccio was a high school dropout and felt the friendship with his son would destroy the future he was helping him build. Frequent gym goers, both boys were rumored to use steroids, which in Kent's case, according to testimonial accounts, significantly contributed to his erratic, aggressive behavior. Kent and Puccio Puccio had experimented with making gay porn movies, hoping to distribute them to local shops. Neither Kent nor Puccio actually participated in these movies, but rather allegedly directed them and coaxed a Florida man in his 40s to perform on camera. Kent tried to peddle a movie titled Rough Boys to porn shops across South Florida. None took him up on the offer due to the poor audio and video quality as well as the lack of any sexual activities in the film beyond the man dancing nude and playing with a dildo. Toward the beginning of 1993, Pucho, age 20, began dating Lisa Connolly, age 18. Frustrated by how much time Pucho spent with Kent, age 20, as well as Kent's treatment of Pucho, Connolly tried to distract Kent from Pucho by setting up her friend Alice, Allie Willis, age 17, with Kent. Kent and Willis dated for a few weeks, but she ultimately ended the relationship because he was abusive. In June, Pucho confided to Connolly that Kent had been abusive to him quite often over the years. Connolly tried to convince him to end the friendship, but Pucho seemed hesitant. By this time, Connolly knew she was pregnant with Pucho's child, refusing to believe it might be Kent, whom she also had sex with, and was determined to pursue a permanent relationship with Pucho, who to her was, quote, the impossible dream, the god of the beach, end quote. Allegedly, Connolly decided that Kent needed to be eliminated permanently and began talking to Pucho and other friends about murdering him. On July 13th, 1993, Connolly called Willis and told her that, quote, Bobby Kent was planning to come to Palm Bay, Florida, where Willis was living to murder her and smother her baby by a previous relationship, unless she returned to Broward County to date him again. End quote. Willis claimed Connolly asked her to come to Connolly's house to discuss murdering Bobby Kent. Willis went to Connolly's house and brought two friends, her current boyfriend, Donald Semnek, age 17, and Heather Swallers, age 18. On the night of July 13th, 1993, Pucho, Semnek, Swallers, Connolly, and Willis met with Kent. Pucho, Semnek, and Swallers became uncomfortable and left. Connolly and Willis decided to lure Kent to a new development under construction in nearby Weston with the promise that he would be able to drive Willis's Mustang 5.0 and have sex with her. Connolly had brought along her mother's pistol, intending to kill Kent while he was distracted by sexual activity with Willis, but was unable to go through with the shooting. Despite the failed attempt, Connolly still wanted Kent dead. Seeking assistance, she contacted a self-proclaimed hitman named Derek Kaufman, age 20, who had been recommended by a friend of Willis. The group met Kaufman at his home in Rolling Oaks. They wanted him to get a gun so they could kill Kent that night, but Kaufman told them he, would not, he could not procure a weapon that quickly. Willis, Connolly, Semnick, and Swallers then went back to Connolly's house and were joined by her cousin, Derek Desert... Des Desverkio, age 19. The group continued to discuss their plans and ultimately decided to go ahead with murdering Kent the next night with Kaufman's assistance. Late on the night of July 14, 1993, the seven met at Pucho's house and finalized their plans. Pucho contacted Kent and convinced him to come out with the group that night, 
with the promise that they would race their cars and that Willis wanted to have sex with him again. The group assembled their weapons. Between them, they had two knives, a lead pipe, and a baseball bat. Around 11.30 p.m., they picked Kent up from his home and headed out to a construction site. When they... When they arrived at the site, Willis, in accordance with the plan, took Kent off to a secluded spot where they were talking. Swallers joined them there while she and Willis distracted Kent. Simnick came up and stabbed Kent in the back of the neck with a knife when Kent asked for Puccio's help. Puccio stuck a knife in Kent's stomach. Kent yelled out an apology, but Puccio continued to slick Kent. But Puccio continued to stab him. When Kent tried to flee, Puccio, Semnick, and Derek Kaufman followed him and continued wounding him. Puccio then slit Kent's throat and hit his head against the ground. Kaufman then approached and hit Kent in the head with the baseball bat, which was the final blow. After this, Dezaverkio, Semnick, Puccio, and Ka Kaufman helped dump Kent's body on the edge of the shore of the marsh in the belief that alligators would eat the decaying body. In the days following the crime, many of the conspirators fessed to various other people. Connolly confessed to her mother, who contacted her sister, Disverchio's mother. Together, the two mothers called in their brother, Joe Scrimna, uncle to the young Connolly and Disverchio, who had friends in the police department and who they thought would know what to do. Scrimna's friends put them in touch with Detective Frank Elizaria of the B Broward County Sheriff's Office, and a cooperative Disverchio confessed everything. As proof, he led Elizaria to Kent's body. Of the seven perpetrators, three will be in Florida prisons for life. Martin Puccio was found guilty of first-degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder in August of 95. He was sentenced to death by electrocution, plus a concurrent 30-year sentence for conspiracy. In 1997, the Supreme Court of Florida ruled that Puccio should not be executed due to mitigating factors, so his death sentence was vacated and he was resentenced to life in prison, concurrent with his existing 30-year sentence for conspiracy, with parole eligibility occurring in 25 years. As of April 2024, he remains in custody at the Everglades Correctional Institution, 20 miles inland from Miami, Florida. Donald Semnick was found guilty of second-degree murder, but at his May 95 sentencing, the judge chose to give him the equivalent of a first-degree murder sentence of life in prison. As of April 2024, he remains in custody at the Okeechobee Correctional Institution, 10 miles north of Okeechobee, Florida. Derek Kaufman was found guilty of first-degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder. In June of 95, he was sentenced to live in prison without parole, sentenced to life in prison without parole for 25 years, plus a consecutive 30-year sentence for the conspiracy. As of April 24, he remains in custody at the Marion Correctional Institution, 10 miles north of Ocala, Florida. The remaining four perpetrators had all been released from Florida prisons by February of 2004. Lisa Connolly, who with Alice Willis was the driving force behind the murder conspiracy, provided evidence and was found guilty of second-degree murder and conspiracy to commit aggravated battery with a deadly weapon, a lesser charge than conspiracy to commit murder. But at her July 1995 hearing, the judge chose to give her the equivalent of a first-degree murder sentence of life in prison plus a concurrent five-year sentence for conspiracy. Her sentence was overturned on appeal as unduly harsh and was reduced in 98 to 22 years. After having served less than nine years, she was released in February of 04. As of 2013, daughter, uh, she was a certified optician living in Pennsylvania, was married and had a then six-year-old child in addition to her then 19-year-old daughter with Pucho, who was born while Connolly and Pucho were both in jail pending their murder and conspiracy trials. Alice Willis, who with Lisa Connolly was the driving force behind the murder conspiracy, was found guilty of second-degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder. In May of 95, she was sentenced to 40 years in prison, plus a concurrent 15-year sentence for conspiracy. The murder sentence was reduced on appeal to 17 years to be followed by 40 years of probation. After having served less than seven years, she was released in September of 01. As of 2013, she was a homemaker and parent living in Florida. Derek Desverchio, who led police to Kent's body and provided other evidence, pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder. In May of 95, he was sentenced to concurrent terms of 11 years in prison. After having served less than five, he was released in October of 99. As of 2013, he was a former long-haul truck driver who had settled in Missouri in 2009 as a single parent to raise his daughter. Heather Swallers, who cooperated with police and provided evidence, pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder. In May of 95, she was sentenced to concurrent in terms of seven years in prison. After having served less than three years, she was released in February of 98. 
As of 2013, she was living in Georgia. Jim Schutz, a reporter with the Houston Chronicle, wrote the 1997 best-selling true crime book, Bully, a true story of high school revenge. The book was adapted by David McKenna after he demanded credited under the pseudonym Zachary Long after he demanded his name be removed from the film and Roger Poulos into the 2001 film Bully, directed by Larry Clark. In the film, Kent was portrayed by Nick Stahl, Pucho was portrayed by Brad Renfro, Willis was portrayed by Bajoy Bej Phillips, Connolly was portrayed by Rachel Miner, Simnick was portrayed by Michael Pitt, Swallers was portrayed by Kelly Garner, Desverkio was portrayed by Daniel Franzi, and Kaufman was portrayed by Leo Fitzpatrick. The story was covered on American Justice, Forensic Files, and Murder Among Friends. The 2001 Forensic Files episode payback includes an interview with Derek Desverkio and the murder uh, about the murder that is the sad story of what happened to Bobby Kent as always I beg of you please make good choices don't do anything I wouldn't do and be cautiously kind to others and I'll see y'all next week bye